please join me in listening to Ricardo Santos, who's going to share his thoughts on how working in the heavy industry, safety is premier and so important throughout the supply chain. How the way you get people to buy into safety is through showing them the vision of what bad safety looks like. He's also going to talk about the efficiency and effectiveness that is necessary to actually deliver successfully. And this applies to the individual, to the team, and to the organization. And in order to get people to move, you've either got to reduce their pain or improve their gain. And success is about improving their gain. He also has something to say about successful sponsors and how having a good sponsor leads to a successful project. And in his view, there are no bad projects. There's only a bad business case. So please spend 30 minutes to listen to me, Richard Farrow, in conversation with Ricardo Santosh. Welcome to this episode of Implementing Best Practice in Business. We're here to help you and your organization understand and implement global best practice to help you face the business challenges of today. Join me, Richard Farrow, CEO of APMG International, in talking to leaders and practitioners who have applied these frameworks and practices to boost their productivity. They're here, willing to share their knowledge and experience to help you learn from them so you can do the same to make you more competitive in today's market. So welcome to this uh, episode of APMG International's podcast. Today, my guest started his career in Portugal and then moved to Ireland to embark on a career on major projects, capital projects for Irish Rail. Welcome, Ricardo. Thank you, Richard. It's a pleasure to be here. Ricardo, would you like to sort of say a few things to the audience about yourself and your career to date and how someone goes from the bright, wonderful country of Portugal to the green and wet country of Ireland. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'll try. So, um, I'm 55, I buried three kids. I came to Ireland in um, 2006 for a, a light rail project. So, at the time, Lewis, um, Dublin was expanding their Lewis network. So, Lewis is the light rail project in Dublin, and I was a project manager for the systems contractor um, in the JV that was responsible for uh, for that extension. Um, and here I am, 13 or 14 years later. Um, I don't complain about the weather anymore, and I, I love it here. Excellent. So, as someone who's involved in capital projects, and I've been involved in a number of construction projects in my life, they take a long time. Have you ever been lucky enough to have started a project enjoyed the ups and downs through the development of it and the execution of it and actually see it come into operation. Have you had that wonderful once in a lifetime experience? Uh, yes, um, I, I may be a lucky, uh, one of the lucky ones, but I have more than once. And the Lewis the Light Trail uh, Dublin project is, is one of the examples. So as I said, I came as a um, project manager, but also as country manager. So the company strategy at the time, uh, the company was very much focused on Latin America and African markets, and the strategy shifted and they decided to target Northern European markets and uh, uh, starting with with Ireland. Um, so on, on that strategy, I was involved since, uh, I would say, inception of the project, um, preparing the commercial offer. Um, the offer was successful. I was uh, happily sent to Ireland with uh, some money and a bag. Um, <laughs> select uh, the solicitors, an accountant, open bank account, um, rent an office, select a team. So I was again happy enough to be allowed to select my own team. Uh, and as 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 the markets were different, um, we felt the need to create. Um, new processes, new procedures. We develop a specific uh, governance and assurance framework. Um, uh, the Irish reality, in fairness, is completely different than, than, than the one we knew uh, from Portugal and, and uh, more southern markets. Um, 
and the work developed during these days um, set the foundation for what ended up being a very successful project. So, uh, yes, I was here initially on that project for four and a half to five years, and I was with the project from inception to completion. So you must also be one of these very, very rare individuals who developed a business case, won the bid, and was then asked to go and actually execute and deliver it. Yes, but you, you, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I don't think that is bad. That is a privilege. Uh, yes, but that's exactly what happened. Um, uh, margins on southern uh, um, countries, um, countries uh, south of, 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 of uh, Portugal, were very low. The market was markets were very aggressive. The company um, identified that the margins were much more comfortable um, on, on northern European markets and everything changed from from one day to the other excellent but but working in the rail industry safety is a top priority um, and i'd imagine that it's always in the front of your mind whether it's during the construction stage or during the operation stage do you think it has an impact on the way that you go about uh, designing and, and executing the project and we know you and i know well enough in the world of project manager management there used to be or there is the iron triangle of time cost and quality so where does safety fit between time cost and quality particularly on you know, rail projects uh, the simple answer is it doesn't safety does not fit in that triangle or or, or square or rectangle um, because safety is not a variable um, safety is absolutely number one and two and three priorities of the project. Uh, so safety is is actually um, the canvas on on uh, uh, which the entire project is going to be designed and and developed. Uh, if if you take the, the the example of the triangle you've just mentioned, um, if if given uh, more money, you can easily accelerate the project without changing the scope. Um, if, on the other hand, you don't have more money, um, but you need to accelerate on other types of projects, this is very, probably not very likely in, in infrastructure projects, but you can reduce the scope to get there. Um, so time, uh, cost, and scope are variables, and safety is not a variable. We, we cannot change. We cannot play with, with, with safety. But, but is safety... Is safety a process or is safety a mindset? How do you get an entire workforce to put safety first, second, and third? I mean, how do you get that throughout your supply chain with everybody who's working for you to actually recognize that you know, it is safety first, safety second, safety third? How do you educate that workforce? You know, when, when, when you're trying to share a, a vision when you're about to enter a, a change process and uh, as a sponsor or, or change manager you want to share a vision that sometimes is very difficult it requires people to see and and picture something that has not yet happened but it's very easy to share with 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 people and we do it uh, in the most gentle way possible uh, share uh, pictures and, and footage of what happens if safety is not properly uh, um, addressed. And, and most of the times, unfortunately, the consequences are, are devastating. So I guess, I guess those, those pictures, those outcomes, uh, uh, interacting with people that have accidents if they survived gets engraved in people's minds and, um, they they leave safety. We leave safety uh, uh, every single day, much more than everything else on on, on, on rail environments. Interesting. Um, I know that you're a great supporter of the practice framework. I mean, I've read some of your blogs about it. I've seen some of the comments you made about it. And you've worked with international frameworks in the past. You worked with the PMI framework. You worked with APM framework. You probably read most of the bodies of knowledge and most of the approaches there are out there. Why do you think that Praxis Framework is different? Why do you think Praxis Framework 
has a place in the current world in the delivery of um, projects and programs? Um, you're partially correct. Um, I've, I've worked with some other frameworks, but I'm, I'm f very far from knowing uh, all the frameworks available. In fact, I would love uh, to know a bit more about uh, uh, all frameworks in the Agile environment, and I'll let you know uh, in a moment why. But uh, I love Praxis uh, mostly because it improves um, efficiency uh, and effectiveness um, by increasing individual performance, team effectiveness, and organization and uh, capability maturity. And in my mind, uh, I think effectiveness is doing the right things and the efficiency is doing those things right. So that's, that's exactly spot on what we, what we are looking for. So uh, by, by acting on those three um, dimensions, if I can call them this way, individual, team, and organization, Praxis is actually a, a fantastic tool to improve strategy execution. And unlike, as I said, I don't know all the frameworks, but unlike uh, all the frameworks I know, um, Praxis has a body of knowledge as a method, as a competency framework, capability and maturity model, and an encyclopedia uh, with loads of techniques and models. Uh, and by the way, it's it's totally free, um, anyone in, can use it. And probably the most, most uh, uh, I would say, fantastic aspect of Praxis is what is called Praxis Local. Praxis Local is, is a very simple, a 50 to 60 page dynamic PowerPoint with links to everything that is relevant uh, within the framework that is available on the website that every company can take and customize to their own uh, needs. Uh, and, and again, completely free of charge. So um, I, I think this, this covered all the differences I, I, I see in practice that are, are, are make, make it a, a much better framework than anything I've, I've seen in the market. You, you, you clearly are, uh, are a huge supporter of practice framework. Have you had the same sort of response from subcontractors and other people you're working with? Have you been able to convince them of that approach or do you think there's still a you know we're going to do it the way we've always done it because you are a pioneer i mean as you say you you came from an organization in portugal that was used to a particular market with low margins you know you won a bid in in northern europe you moved to northern europe you built a team you built an organization you built a light rail system <laughs> yeah you you must be a very, very influential individual within you know, your network of, of organizations. Do others share your forward-looking view, or do you still find a lot of us, a lot of people, are still rooted in the past? Um, that is correct. A lot of people are rooted in the past, and unfortunately, uh, people only move away from their comfort zone for two reasons. Uh, I like to give this example, uh, either to get closer to something that gives them pleasure or to get away from something that causes pain. So we need to show them either one or the other if we want movement, otherwise they, they, they will stand uh, still. Um, I, I worked um, a few years ago for a, an Irish startup um, that developed a... a um, bespoke model of tidal turbines. So renewable energies, uh, a 500 ton turbine that goes under the sea and produces um, clean energy. And the CEO um, said, listen, this is, this is novelty. Uh, there's nothing uh, like this in the market. One of shareholders, one of the major shareholders is um, a military equipment uh, 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 company French company, and they do mostly submarines. The only thing in common between submarines and the tidal turbines is water. So I want a project management framework that is bespoke to the to the business. And when 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 uh, uh, listen, he wanted the man was very clear. He wanted an outcome, and he didn't, didn't care how to get there. And the only thing available in the market at the time. To deliver what the CEO wanted was praxis local. 
So as I said, you take Praxis Local, you, you, you learn what is freely available on the website and you customize to your needs. You're not constrained by um, the, the tightness and the inflexibility of other frameworks. So this is, this is the most wonderful aspect of, of Praxis. And did he take your advice? He took my advice. I took two consultants. We worked with or based on Praxis and we delivered the framework. Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, he didn't care much about Praxis at the time. As I said, he wanted the output. But yep. the output would have never been delivered if it wasn't for Praxis. And did you build a turbine? And is it generating green energy? We built a turbine and I put it on, on the bottom of the sea uh, at the Bay of Fundy in Canada, where I was for several months. Excellent. What a great story. What Thank a you. really terrific story. Um, I know that your current activity is around organizational change and that you're involved in a number of organizational change initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you blend change management principles and project management principles, because they're, they're two tribes. Change managers think projects fit within change, and project managers think change fits within projects. Um, do you have a hybrid approach? Do you have your own individual approach to your change management initiatives? Or how have you tackled that? And how have you brought those two bodies of knowledge and thoughts together to, to deliver on them? Um, on your current um, projects or programs? Can I say that I do not agree when you say there are two different tribes? It's it, You can say whatever you my, like. I, I like the challenge. <laughs> my apologies, but it's it's one single tribe. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's you know, the same way that uh, when, when, uh, when we say, uh, when Adrian Dooley says that... Uh, uh, there's there's no such thing as the agile world and, and the waterfall world. It's it's a continuum, and and you have to use the best of the two worlds. This is exactly the same thing. There is n there is no such thing as project management and change management. They are deeply intertwined, and I'll I'll, I'll justify why. There is there is change within change projects. Um, Einstein usually said that doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results is the definition of insanity, right? So, yeah. so companies that face new projects, uh, something that has, has not been done before, uh, or, or companies that uh, never succeeded a big deal with previous project, projects and they want to change things, they need to to, to start doing things differently from, 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 from scratch, from a clean slat. So uh, whether the project is to deliver change or not, which a huge percentage of, of, of the times it is, if, if you need to tick the boxes I just described, you need change inside the change. So you need to deliver projects in a different way than you have been delivered so far. If you want to stay competitive, you need to be different from your competition. So you need to change the way that either everybody's working or the way that you've been working so far. So how do you do that? How do you mobilize an entire team? And I'm, I'm, I'm currently responsible for a, a team that has probably um, 38 to 40 people. How do you mobilize a team to, to, to a vision. Simon Sinek says that all starts with the why. They all need to understand the why. They need, they need to feel it. I need to make sure that their, their heartbeat goes faster when we talk about this vision. Otherwise, we will not change. Companies can develop new procedures, new frameworks, uh, governance, assurance, but if people do not change the mindset, nothing is delivered as planned initially. So, yes, project managers and change managers are one only. They should be one only entity. Fascinating. And do you, do you have support for that? concept within your team of 38 to 40 people are they are aligned with you that um 
we have to think differently, we have to do differently, and what we've done in the past, we need to leave behind us and find a new way of working in order to stay competitive and stay relevant. If the 38 people thought, as I just described, I wouldn't be needed, so I'm there exactly to try to drive them to, to, to the good path. Uh, some are easier than, than others, uh, but that's, <laughs> that's the onus of uh, communicating uh, efficiently with all of them is, is, is on me. So it, it, does the driver need to be a servant leader, somebody that is actually part of them and provides the vision and the leadership, or is that driver somebody with a big stick? to make sure they do what they're being told to do. How do you drive um, those professional people to, to get to share a common vision, to share a common mindset? I, 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 I told you earlier that uh, people only move for two reasons, to get away yeah. from pain or to get closer to something that is uh, good and nice. And uh, you know what? Some people has, have uh, an incredible resistance to pain so there's no point in trying sticks. They, 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 they won't move. It's not the right approach. Uh, that, that, that increased heartbeat is, is, is achieved with uh, sharing a vision, a passion. Uh, uh, it's telling them, close your eyes and see, see the output. I, I now look back and, and I tell my, my, my three kids, uh, you see, the lowest extensions, I participated in this. I, I delivered part of this work. So it's, it's trying to do, do, do that with, with the team before the, the, the work is complete. Close your eyes and see people leaving their cars at home and using electric trains that are sustainable means of transport. Uh, the, the number of passengers, the, num the increased number of passengers that we will be able to, 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 to transport, uh, people need to see that and the benefits of that. Otherwise, they won't bother. They will, they, they will stay where they are. Thank you. So, so it is about that. Um, it's all about the gain. It's all about the achievement and the vision rather than the pain. Now, I think we have a problem in project management about sponsors. So you know, I think the profession needs to do more to educate and coach, even mentor project sponsors. You know, thinking of the great sponsors you've worked with, you know, what do you think set them apart from others? need to be very careful with the words now. <laughs> No, we don't need any names here, Ricardo. No, 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 that's fine. Um, we don't need any no, lawyers' no, letters. No, 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 no names. No, no names. Um, very clearly, the best sponsors I've met, and I underline those that I've met, are those that um, have walked the path. That started very young in project environments. Uh, junior team, team team member, assistant project manager, project manager, program manager, and, and, until they went up the ladder uh, until they, they, they had access to a seat at the organization strategy table. They know the path. They know the difficulties. They know what is needed to, to uh, deliver successfully. Additionally, they need the they, they, they absolutely need to excel in people management. Uh, I think they need to be very supportive and protective of their team. They need to a, a good sponsor kind of creates a, a shield around their, uh, his team. He he protects them, um, and and and, and uh, a team that is that feels protective increases loyal, lo loyalty and, and increases uh, performance of delivery, for sure, because they feel safe. Uh, a, a good sponsor manages directly the most complex and difficult stakeholders, releasing the pressure from, from, from the project team and the project manager. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's being that shield, that, that protector of the team, and they need to master the art of um, face gateway, face the gateways. That's fascinating because I always thought sponsors would have come from the business. 
that they wouldn't have come up, to, to use your wonderful expression, they wouldn't have walked the path, that they would have come from from somewhere else where they've got the uh, the business case, they've got the business um, objectives to deliver. The sponsors you talk about walking the path, is that because it's capital projects and therefore the organisations sponsoring the capital projects are also staffed with people that have executed and delivered on capital projects? I don't think it's exclusive of capital projects. Um, a business case is very rarely um, accepted, approved, reviewed by one person. It's usually um, a group, a portfolio team, but projects are, are very rarely supported by a group. So it's, it's um, I would say, uh, wise to have one person that understands, the one person that is there to steer the, the delivery should be the one person that understands the mechanics of project delivery and project mm. management. Because there are other people that were involved in approving, developing and approving a business case. So uh, I, I don't think it should be necessarily someone from the business. Excellent. Um, Ricardo, if you were starting out in your career, you know, a couple of years into your career, what would be the three things that you would have liked to have known not that many years ago when you started, but what were those three things you would like to have known when you started your career that you now know? Starting with what, what we just finished, I would like to have known that um, a good sponsor is one of, if not the main critical success factor of a project. Um, I'd like to have known that there are no bad projects. What we have is bad business cases. <laughs> and um, I would like to have known at the time that uh, project management and change management are so intertwined. I thought project management was completely detached from change management, and at the time I was wrong. Ricardo, fascinating. Many, many thanks for taking time out from your very busy schedule to talk to me today. You have a really experienced working in, in heavy projects, and you've got some very useful um, tips and thoughts you can share with the rest of the community. Thank you for sharing that with us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for listening. We're always keen to hear your feedback and suggestions for future episodes. You can find all the information in the show notes below. Please visit apmg-international.com to find out more about our accredited training and the certifications that support them that are related to the topics discussed in this series. I hope you've enjoyed today and I look forward to you joining future episodes while we continue our exploration into best practice and the benefits it brings to global business. Thank you.